All right, then we'll call our ordinance committee uh, to order and we could rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, next is our uh, audience of, of citizens. And uh, we have quite the crowd in here. I don't know if we're going to get through it uh, quick <laughs> enough. Yeah, <laughs> they had other things to do. So we'll go ahead and uh, I see no one online, no one here. So we'll close the audience of citizens and go on to our uh, March 5th meeting minutes. You can uh, look at those and... Uh, we're happy with them. We could take a motion to approve. I move we approve the March 5th meeting minutes as presented. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, so moved. Okay, on to our noise ordinance discussion. So uh, what we got? Where we are right now is... Uh, have drafted a draft uh, noise ordinance. We had some discussion. A big part of this uh, is enforcement, and it falls on the PD. And we thought it would be good to ask uh, someone from the PD. We have the Deputy Chief here who can come and speak to us, and hopefully we can ask questions and take it from there. Okay. You know, we don't... We don't do this right now, so a couple of departments that have a noise ordinance. Oh, okay. Um, and also, I check the prices for these devices. They're anywhere from you know forty to one hundred and fifty bucks. And oh, so that took. Ferraro has one. He bought <laughs> oh, Beckley Road for the firing range. Oh. sixty-five bucks. Oh, and he did it. Oh, good. So just to give an idea, but you might have some other thoughts as well. Over to you, Deputy Chief. Thanks, thanks, Chief, for coming. Um, what do you got? So uh, we did go through the ordinance, and we just have some some questions and concerns. I guess our, our first concern would be we hate to do something like this if there's not a real need for it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what precipitated this. Uh, we haven't had any real problems that we haven't normally been able to address. Um, the police certainly can enforce loud or disturbing noise at unreasonable times or unreasonable noise um, without this this ordinance in place. In most cases, like a loud party, uh, someone playing music late at night, that can just be addressed through Connecticut state law. You don't really need an ordinance for that. So I guess my caution is if this is something for just one situation. Um, I would advise against it. If we have some sort of prevalent issue or a lot of people are complaining about, then, okay, then maybe that's something that, that needs to be looked into. We haven't really seen that from our side, uh, stuff that we haven't been able to really handle. Um, so I looked through the ordinance. There's just a couple, uh, perhaps, bookkeeping things um, to, to look at if this ordinance were to go forward. We have a construction noise ordinance already. And the times on that go from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, the, the proposed ordinance has some issues with the time frame in here because it goes from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. The night goes from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. So there's a, a one hour overlap there. Uh, and to make that consistent with general the construction ordinance, it would be recommended to start it at 7 a.m. 7 a.m. and go till 9 p.m. if we were to do something like that. Um, I can tell you that obviously somebody put some work into writing this. However, um, there's a lot involved in this, and it's pretty confusing for your average officer to be able to go through this and be able to do enforcement on that. Um, when you get into uh, things like sound levels and sound meters, and they talk about A-weighted sound pressure levels, uh, the sound meters, you know, you talk about 
uh, zones, zone A, zone B, zone C, residential, commercial, industrial. Our officers just don't have that information. So everything in this ordinance really points at the police department and no one else. But I think that it should be more of a shared responsibility with zoning because a lot of this no. stuff probably has to do with businesses. Sure. And yeah. not necessarily residential. So that's a, another thing to think about. Um, if you go into the section that called uh, instruments and measure measures. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of work to be done here. And this isn't something, first of all, you're going to have to buy this equipment. We can't really buy it and put it in every cruiser because you know what's going to happen. It's going to get lost. It's going to get broken. Mm -hmm. You would only be able to have a few of them. You, you would really have to call the supervisor out. And our concerns are who's going to do the training? Who's going to pay for that? Who's going to buy the meters? They're really not a huge expense. They do go all the way up to a few hundred dollars, depending on how accurate you want to be with these readings. But you talk about uh, it has to be calibrated before and after each measurement. And if you're out of doors, you got to have a windscreen. Sound level meter shall be placed at an angle to the sound source as specified by the manufacturer, at least four feet above the ground. So placed so as not to interfere. I'm telling you, I, I don't even really understand a lot of that myself. Measurement shall be taken at a point that is located about one foot beyond the property line. We don't know where the property lines really are. We would have to just take the person's word for it, which I'm not sure that we want to base enforcement necessarily on that. Uh, the emitter's premises includes his or her individual land, unit of land, or group of contiguous parcels. We really don't have a lot of that information as far as, as land is concerned. And this one, I have no idea what this is. While measurements are being recorded, a continual visual and oral surveillance of extraneous sound sources all be made to ensure that measurements are due to the sound being investigated. The sound levels, extraneous sound sources shall be recorded. I, I don't even know what that means, to be honest. So obviously there's a lot of hurdles to be over. It's not as easy just walking out there and grabbing a piece of equipment and pressing a button and getting a decibel level because you talk about calibrations and stuff like that. And I'm going to say that I don't know how accurate this is going to be to have your average officer go out there and try and attempt to do something like this. Um, everything in here says the police department. Uh, if you go to administration and enforcement, mm -hmm. It specifically says everything has to be done by the police department. And I, I really don't think that this is something that should be thrust completely on the police department. Mm. This ordinance itself, the way it's written, is, is not unusual. Other towns have stuff similar to this. Right. I have uh, an ordinance for New Britain, mm -hmm. which is very, very similar. Mm -hmm. But it never mentions the, the police department specifically or actually anyone. <laughs> Um, it actually specifically says the person conducting sound measurements in most, most places throughout this. It doesn't have this section at all. The administration enforcement, mm -hmm. this section is not even in there. So it's a lot more simplified. Um, and I think ultimately mm -hmm. this is something that's going to be very difficult to enforce for your average street cop to go out there and to do this. So. If there's a major problem in town that needs to be addressed, then maybe these things could be overcome and these hurdles, you know, we could deal with them. Mm -hmm. But if there really isn't, then I would say that the laws of the state of Connecticut pretty much cover most situations that we're going to run into as far as loud noise, um, people having loud port, you know, parties at night. We can go and just shut those down as it is. And the people that are creating the noise, if they don't stop, they can be arrested for that. So... Have you arrested anybody for any of that? We normally don't have to. Okay. We just go they stop. tell them to knock it off they and stop. they do. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have had some parties where we've made some arrests. Yeah. Like I said, that's not very frequent. Yeah. You know, I worked the road for many, many years and I can yeah. count on less than one hand the times we've had to do that and that. Uh, I mean, two things come to mind why this came up. And I, I think this... If I'm not correct, Jeff, tell me. But this came. This is following the state statute, right? I think or no? What? The decibel levels. You, you have to. You have to have. The the noise levels have to be at least as restrictive as the state 
Um, in terms of the process, we wrote North Haven's noise ordinance okay. probably 2012. It's been at least a dozen years that North Haven's been operating under this ordinance. PD yeah. does it? Yeah. They need it? Yeah. So, you know, Drew, what happened with this too is we found out, right, if I remember correctly, that the state, um, deep, I guess, right, um, won't come out and force the state law for noise. <laughs> so kind of doesn't leave us with, a, you know, sometimes a lot. Why would, why would we need? Well, I mean, the, the factory there, the bright feed, okay? I mean, that was a big problem. Thank God they were cooperative. But I'm thinking that they're not, all, you know, many times they're definitely not that cooperative right. businesses. I think it's a little bit more directed at businesses, but mm -hmm. there is one situation I've, you know, been made aware of over off of West Lane where the pool, the neighbor's pool, maybe for, you, you probably know yep. this one. Yep. And apparently nothing has been done. Or I, I not has been done. You, I know you guys have tried according to the neighbors that I spoke. That to. is, that is an unusual. Yes, it is. It is unusual. I agree with you. It's and kind really of what it boils down to yeah. is the configuration of the property. Yeah. Well, it kind of makes... creates an amphitheater. Gotcha. So that the sound in gotcha. that person's yeah. yard yeah. is pretty reasonable if you walk over there and listen to it. It's not yeah. excessive, but, but yet the next travels yeah. a lot farther than you would normally have because of the yeah. um, contour of the of the land. So that you know that would be more of kind of an isolated thing. I yeah, I get it. Like I, I mean, I'm just worried that because the state won't do anything, and you guys I know can do stuff. But I, I you know I like to have it. It doesn't. I don't. I mean, I don't foresee you, mm -hmm. and we don't want to burden you with this, right. and I don't think that's the plan. But right. I am in, interested in, I, I don't know, Jeff, if planning and zoning, the zoning enforcement officer could be trained too, right? I would imagine. Sure. Yeah, so I, I think we can, I, right. I like that idea. That's a good idea, right. but, you know, because that think, would. Uh, and not that, believe me, not that I'm trying to dump this on P&Z. No, 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 no. I think it makes sense. They there. do have better knowledge of, yeah, of, of people's properties and land boundaries and things yeah. like that. So, and, yeah. and not to say in a pinch that, they could come down. Yeah, they've been trained in how to use the equipment. Sure, and then we could do enforcement. Yeah, based off that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that, that's that a, that's a good idea. So, yeah, um, I, I I just think based upon I, I I'm more worried about not so much that yeah. one isolated one, but the the, right. the the bright feed worries me only because if they weren't cooperative, mm -hmm. we would probably have a problem. And if the state won't come out and enforce it, right, we're left, and and then we got to rush this through. You know, if it's right. sitting there, I hope we never have to use it. But if we need it, it's there and other yeah. towns do have it. And so. we would be supportive um, j if it could just be kind of simplified a bit. Yes. I'm sure. It we, needs could, to, we could work on that. that it has, so. uh, How much more restrictive yeah. is this one than the state? Is this the state? Well, well, again, you know, DEEP has it used to be that you had to get your ordinance approved by DEEP. They've totally washed their hands of municipal noise and said the towns don't even have to send us their ordinances anymore. Do whatever you want. So, you know, the the deep regulations only really deal with decibel levels and this and zones. That's why it's set up that way, um, along with exemptions. So it's very similar in that respect. In terms of the only major differences are in enforcement, because Deep has employees. Somebody who is an employee of the town needs to be trained in, you know, you don't you don't need to train if it's the PD. You don't train everybody in the PD, right? Because you get a complaint, and whoever the designated person or persons are, they're the ones that investigate it. So you train a couple of people. And if you want the ZEO to be involved, you train the ZEO or the ZEO's designee. And that's who that's who does it. But Deep really doesn't, you know, I mean, anytime we had a major, we've had a couple of significant commercial and industrial noise issues in North Haven because there's a significant amount of commercial development. Deep really says, you're on your own. <laughs> you know, they don't, they don't really do anything. Right. A lot of towns don't have noise ordinances to begin with. So if if we didn't, and I'm so I'm just trying to get a, a good understanding. If we did not have this ordinance, and there was a complaint, the police department would still go out. The only difference is they wouldn't measure; they would just 
address the issue. Right. And if it, it was a business, that, really, except for measuring the noise. Mm, probably add some well, things in there. It's a, it's, a, it's a question, you know, the PD has <laughs> jurisdiction based on the penal code. Right. So, you know, it depends on if it's disturbing the peace, right. if it's harassment. It, de it depends on the circumstances surrounding the noise. You know, who's making it? What time is it? What is it? That kind, where is it? That kind of thing. The, the ordinance gives you a broader jurisdiction to control noise pollution. That's that's what it does. I mean, it, it creates a new law and a new jurisdictional trigger to regulate noise. You know, so, you know, my I my my experience has been that a lot of the complaints that we've gotten in North Haven have not exceeded the decibel levels. Um, but the fact that we had the ordinance made people feel like at least they could go and get it checked out. Whereas before they were being told there's nothing the town could do. But more often than not, there's, and I think you saw this with the gentleman that came out a couple of meetings ago, we had one very large, uh, and, and they're an in an industrial zone, manufacturing long, long time they've been there. The closest, neighborhood to them is probably i don't know maybe eighth of a mile um and the noise that was being complained about even though it didn't exceed the decibel levels the company wanted to make everybody comfortable and so they made some changes they invested a little bit of money and they went away so a lot of times you know like you saw with that gentleman that came you don't really need the noise ordinance, but you know only the folks that kind of thumb their nose at you and say, "I'm doing whatever I want." Do you need the ordinance for? Right. Businesses are a little more complicated because an officer responds to a call of a business making noise. We have to assume that that business operates as a business. It's zoned to do that, and businesses make reasonable noise depending on their business. So that that's kind of a tricky tricky spot to be in. Um, as far as sounds excluded and exemptions, we did see a couple of things that if this, if an ordinance like this was to be proposed, that we would suggest also adding. Number one, we have a police range, which is kind of unique, that I would also throw in there, police training, the police range. Uh, any construction that's authorized by a state or municipality, such as nighttime paving, because occasionally you've got a project they want to do at night. Emergency generators. Yeah. Yeah, the power during, goes out during, during storms. Yeah. yeah, they're allowed, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. but generally they're temporary in nature. Yeah. yeah. Um, and any construction or utility work uh, that's done at night, like somebody knocks a pole down and you're parked in front of my house for eight hours trying to put a pole and stuff up. That would mm. something that we just have to be careful to exempt. Um, but I think we would be a lot more in favor if it was, like I said, more of a cooperative effort and, you know, we could kind of do it together. And I think that that you're absolutely correct that there would have to be just a, a few people that would be trained and it'd be kind of hit or miss whether they're there or not. I sure, guess that's sure. the thing. But, you know, if we work together with zoning between the two of us, we could we could figure something out. Yeah, I think that's a that's work. reasonable for the limited situations that's going to happen. I think yeah, between I the two of us, we can get together. And, yeah, I, I mean, really, what brought my concern up was the state washes their hands yeah. of it and then we're just oh. like left. OK, right. bless you. We're, we're, we're left, you know, again, you know, you can do certain things and, right. and I know you do them, but not everything. Yeah. And I agree with zoning involved too. Yeah. They, they have a, a understanding of some other things that you don't. So, yeah, I mean, so yeah, we can make it reasonable that way. No doubt chief, you know, um, it's my thoughts. Yeah, no, they're good thoughts. So we appreciate you, you coming and uh, looking at it and uh, we'll, we'll probably have some discussion next time. We'll have another meeting um, when, you know, maybe Kate's back and and everybody's uh, here. Yeah. If I may. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Both instances, you, I don't know whether you were involved when Joe Ferraro went to the uh, Beckley Arms and measured the... Oh, the range. Range. It yes. didn't register above. It didn't. No, it didn't. Same with the other one too, right? I mean, that yeah. was a, a very low frequency humming noise that came out oh at, at, at that the, the right feeds the the, the the facility yeah right. a different so, a different noise yeah so we have to think about what 
if it doesn't meet the criteria, what yeah. happens? People are going to say, well, your own machine says it's below. Yeah. What do you do now, right? So, well, I mean, if that's the, you know, I mean, we checked it. It's not yeah. of the level that, Right. I mean, I guess it disturbs. You've done your due diligence and you. Yeah, we've done said, what's right and fair. The state standard for. Yeah, right. I mean, that's the standard. Yeah. Um, so at least we have that to say, well, you know, it's below the state standard. What are we going to what are we going to do? And I, I, I mean, still could still talk to people and say, right. hey, could you turn yeah. it down or, or whatever they yeah. have to do? The reason TD's mentioned, Jeff, you can correct it. A lot of times these things happen after hours. They expect the PD to go in. Most of the time. Right? Most, most of, of the time. Be at right? night, most of so, the but, time. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the things we can do, I mean, obviously, if it's a loud party or... Yeah, that's different. Like yeah. That's, that's different. different. We wouldn't do... You wouldn't that's do We got covered anyways. So we yeah. didn't even yeah. really need that. And yeah. I don't think that's happening throughout the day. Yeah. We can certainly work with right. a zoning enforcement officer. Yeah. 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 Mean, I wouldn't call them out at night or anything. No, because yeah. the nighttime is different. It's right. the other scenario, typically. There's not a lot of business activity at night no, no no manufacturing that's true yeah there is some of that i mean well, that's that's those are the ones that we've had the issues with yeah you know, that's what manufacturers. i well that's kind of why i think it was brought to light because of that you know bright fee but again they stepped up and were phenomenal to fix it i mean mm -hmm. they really were you know a good corporate citizen for that but that's not everybody the, yeah uh, if i mean yeah one, so on this particular one in west lane you mentioned you went there the noise level is we've been there as loud before what can you do if there's anything at all other than there, there's not a lot we can enforce the, the the noise is not necessarily unreasonable it's just noise that the other neighbor doesn't want to hear <laughs> honestly that's what it boils down to I, I don't like your music and i don't want to hear it even though it's not necessarily excessively loud or causing a disturbance so that's a sticky one. This is like a fan, right? It's a fan or something. Like uh, Goss fan? No, he actually has speakers set up. What? On his deck. Oh, uh, is that that? But they're all pointed towards the house. The the noise is placed at a, a reasonable level. He be, doesn't uh, do it late uh, at night or anything. We're talking about a different one? We're talking about the one on the, the citizen complaint. This Indoor is, pool? No, this is, we're talking about something completely. It's a different one. This is different. It's off of Westland. It's an indoor pool and the exhaust fan blows to their window. And apparently the police have been out there several times and just, you know, they got the, the house, six, the house was sold a couple of years ago and oh. the new neighbors the, that own the indoor pool don't seem to be very, they don't care. Right. I think the old neighbors might've cared, but, um, that, that one I haven't heard about. That's, an, that's one that I've heard some complaints about from the neighbor, mm -hmm. especially in the summer when their windows are open and the fan is blown, but the fan right. blows all year round. I guess it's an indoor right. pool. So, you know, I, I don't, you know, we could talk about that it's offline, tough. but it's a function of a pool. Right. So, right. You know, but should it be on in the middle of the night? I guess that's the, that's the, that's kind of the question, I think, but I mean, we can figure that out. Well, that yeah. issues there. Yeah. You know, part of this is remembering that people come to government to solve problems that really are private issues. Mm -hmm. You know, I had this case uh, that just ended about a month ago where a guy gets an approval for a farm winery and he then does a little patio outdoor dining. Then he goes to get full blown in a residential neighborhood though and he gets denied, but he starts doing it anyway. <laughs> so the guy who lives next to him who just in the it's a really small world category turns out to be a client of mine <laughs> who I had no idea that is a contractor no idea this was going on until I was hired by the town yeah. to get involved he got these huge speakers like concert size speakers the neighbor yeah, yeah the neighbor. and he put them on the on the boundary of the property and he blasted church music <laughs> and there's an exemption in the noise ordinance no particular town to religious music. <laughs> oh, right. oh, so I kid you not, the guy <laughs> shut the business down. <laughs> he withdrew his. He filed an administrative appeal. Uh, and he, he just gave up. Well, there's a unique solution we'll have to keep in mind uh, for the future. I guess. But, you know what I told what I told the, this guy who called me, and he, I said, "Look, this is a private nuisance issue." Uh, 
some of that too. Yeah. We can't do anything. This is between the two neighbors. Right. Yeah. We we do get that stuff yeah. a lot, and uh, yeah. we're, we're not always yeah. able to intervene in those cases. Yeah, yeah. because people don't. Yeah. We couldn't even have a meeting. We couldn't even get them in a room together. And this guy, he calls me, and I'm like, when I found out it was him, I was like, of all the people, because this guy's a wall breaker, <laughs> you know. And I said to him, "You want this to be over with? Buy his property." And then you won't have to worry about it anymore. Good solution. Hmm. You know, but but a lot of times, you know, this private nuisance stuff, I, I deal with it all the time. So a lot of the times you'll have a noise ordinance and it doesn't exceed the decibel level. And the neighbors will be like, well, you're not measuring it right. Yeah, and it just never ends because they don't want to go hire a lawyer. They don't want to go spend money yeah. or they don't want to actually confront the neighbor they want to use you to do it. I mean, I deal with that a lot. I'm shocked, Jeff, that the government can't fix all our problems. I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> yes, I yes, Charlie. The complaint was very good about the zoning being involved. I oh, yeah, absolutely. A few years back in East Berlin, there was a lot of problems with trucks idling and making a lot of noise. Yes, in the remember that? Area. That was off Redwood. Well, off of, Redwood people were complaining. Off of commerce. commerce. Yeah, but yes. The part of the problem was... Yes. The commercial property owner had cleared a lot of trees that were designed to be noise buffers. They were in the original approval of the thing. So that's yes. back to your point, the zoning yeah. should be involved in it. Yeah, we dealt with that one a lot on zoning. Yeah, that was a problem. I th I guess it got, well, they, they were idling overnight, right? The, the guy fixes. Trucks would fix, to be fixed. They would it was still there. That's right. It was still there forever, right? Yeah. The trees yeah. to make a huge difference. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, so good. Good, good, good discussion, and uh, we got some more stuff to think about. And we appreciate, yeah, I appreciate it, Drew. Yeah, I, well, we can make some changes and definitely incorporate zoning. They should be involved anyway, honestly. Um, and we'll, you know, we won't. It, I, I mean, I agree with it. We're, it's not something we're looking to use every day or every month or hopefully every year. But if we need it, I, I, I was just worried when the state completely washes their hands of it. It just leaves us with nothing, you know, if we need it. If we don't ever need it, then okay, that's fine. But we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it some more, but I appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Chief. Appreciate it. That's good. Um, so we can talk about it. We'll have a, we can have another meeting. Think about it. Digest it. Peter, what do you, you agree? Anything, Peter, to add? Yeah, yeah I, 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 know, I know this sounds unusual coming from a Democrat, but <laughs> the government isn't always necessarily the answer. What's a wrong? What, what are you talking about, Peter? <laughs> no, I I'm with you. The heat must have got to me out here. Um, hmm. Oh, yeah. What yeah, happened? They, are, they must, are they brainwashing? Are they got radio waves going through? Yes. Your yes. Okay. Uh, they got, <laughs> they, uh, I think we could probably hash this off, in a, you know. Yeah. We'll make we'll, we get better language. Yes. Yeah. We could work on a few things. Yep. Uh, I, I know, Jeff, you took some notes. and. Yep. Uh, we could I definitely, I, I think definitely incorporate planning and zoning. I mean, the Z, you know, he should definitely, the zoning enforcement officer should definitely be included. There's no doubt about that. So, all right, we, we can discuss it uh, in a month or so when everybody's back and uh, we can see, incorporate some more stuff and see where we go. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Perhaps I'll distribute this with uh, zoning enforcement. Yes. Have them I'll have deal the with yeah. And bring yeah. It here. Yeah, good. Well, let's do that next Someone time. Someone from the PD at the same time. And, oh, yeah. Uh, they can maybe hash it out a little bit. Yeah. And then, Makes sense? Yeah. yeah. I mean, We're I, good? You know, there's yeah. some minor changes in terms of the consistency in time, sync with the construction, yeah. joint enforcement, and exemptions. He talked about some of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we can put all that together. And perhaps even before coming back, um, I'll ask them to uh, review it and give any yes. comments they might have. Yes. So that when we meet next time, we can go over everything yeah. at the same time. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think we could definitely make some changes. And uh, again, I don't, I, I, we're not looking to overburden anybody. And if we don't ever need it, we don't ever need it. But the day we need it, we don't have it, then it's too late. You know, you got to do all this. But I, I think, Jeff, you would agree that. We have been fortunate in Berlin. We've been lucky. We've had a lot of yes instances, at least in my five years here, when 
yeah. when confront people, they're willing to. Yeah, they you know, they they do they do the right thing. Yeah, businesses. Yeah, which yeah, has been very good. Yep. You know, sometimes your luck runs out. Yeah, the only out, time though. that you really have is is when somebody takes it personally. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Yeah. That's never a good thing for anybody. It happens. Yeah. Yeah, it's not personal, son. It's strictly business. <laughs> the, the one that you mentioned in West Lane is yes. of, falls into that category. Probably it, it a little bit of. I would I would imagine that was it from what I've heard. Yeah, but anyway, okay, all right. Help them out somehow. Yeah, we could try again. I guess. Um, all right. Anything else? We're good. Yes. yes. I, I would like to bring something up that sure. people, um, I've been talking to some people in town that they have a concern with, not that it's an issue at this point, but because of what they hear going on nationally, they want to know if there's anything we can do in the town. Hmm. Um, and it has to do with squatting and squatters rights oh, and yeah. the ability to get rid of them or not get rid of them. Yeah. Um, I did speak with the chief a little bit, um, just so I can get an understanding from his point. Yeah. And from what I understand, the state pretty much allows it. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't think we can do an ordinance against it. But Jeff, I didn't know if you knew of any towns that had anything regarding that, just for the fact. Well, when, when people talk about squatters, I know that I missed it, but there was something in the news recently yes. that got people all fired up about it because I'm getting a lot of people mentioning it to me. Yes. You know, yeah, forgot about that. Squatter is a term that's usually intended to refer to some kind of adverse possession, right? That I have acquired title through being in possession of land. Connecticut has a very clear statute that it has to be open and adverse. In other words, if somebody if somebody's going to claim a right to your property, they have to be basically in your house for a very long period of time. And that's what so, is happening it, now, well, right? We, so you're yeah, like yeah, we had we had a, we had a, a case we had a case in our office, but it wasn't squatting; it was title theft. Different. different. We had somebody who was away, yeah, and when they came back. There were all new appliances in the kitchen and something had been recorded on land records. Oh, now, it was not a deed. It was some funky document whereby they claimed through adverse possession title to this home in Hampton, Connecticut. And, you know, we filed the uh, action to quiet title and, you know, it, it got it got cleared up very easily. But... Uh, you know, you hear there's commercials now. You can buy some kind of insurance. Well, title theft insurance. Well, it's not so much the title side. They're the people that I'm talking to. Their concern is is that, you know, they have property up here and property down south. So half half the time they're there, half the time they're up here. And the concern is is when they come back and someone is in their home says, "Sorry, I'm here and I'm not leaving." What rights do those? Let's pass it. Once they establish mm. residency, yeah, that's the problem. From experience, once they have residency, they prove they got mail at that location. Connecticut Housing Court is on their side. It'll take you six. But that's months. but that's housing court. Can't the police won't enforce an eviction? You have to get a court order. Yeah, yeah. well, that was the gist of the article. That very scenario. I don't agree with that. That that's not the law. Yeah, trespassing is trespassing. Some of it was in different states. It wasn't right. It, all, it wasn't all here. But what you just said was exactly what they said. They were squatting for you know the Florida thing. They were gone for three six months, and the residents came back to owners, and the police arrested them. And it wasn't. I don't think it was in Connecticut that particular scenario. But well, but they, you better not do it in a stand your ground state like yeah, well, Carolina because you get you shot. Know, they don't have that here. That's I the other like that poor kid from Madison that was coming home. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know someone in Texas where it happened to them. They were gone for about two months. In Texas, too. And they came back. Of course, someone was in their house, yeah. sold their appliances, tag sailed all their items in the house while they were gone. Oh, nice. Um, and it took about 18 months to get rid of them. Yeah. It's a and now it's costing them about $225,000 to get their house back in. Shape. Yeah. I mean, so I don't know if there's anything the town can do. I don't know if there's... It's trespassing. You know? It's trespassing. No, probably not. But housing courts have jurisdiction 
over landlord tenant issues, possession issues. The housing court doesn't have jurisdiction over a criminal matter or a title matter. But once the person says the they're living there and they can yeah. show, look, I got a library card mailed here, they're going to claim they have tenancy. Well, One they, of my customers owns a string of motels. He just spent 11 months getting a guy out. He never rented to. Somebody rented, gave this other guy the key. The guy got in there and the police said, he's a tenant. We can't do anything. It took him 11 months to get the guy out of the room. Well, you know, look, any criminal complaint there's there's two types of court proceedings, right? Criminal and civil. The difference between a criminal proceeding and a civil proceeding, other than the burden of proof at trial and the po potential punishment, is who is representing whom. You know, in a criminal matter, the police have to do an investigation. And if they determine that a crime has been committed, they get an arrest warrant. They go to an assistant state's attorney and they pursue prosecution. If they decide not to pursue prosecution, that's not because a crime hasn't been committed. Many times they'll say it's a civil matter and you need to go hire your own lawyer and deal with it. There's nothing we as a town can do to change that. You know, I mean, it's, I'm telling you that the, <laughs> I'm laughing because this I don't know how I don't know how in the last few months, this has become this hot topic, other than the fact that there's people that are breaking the law and getting caught and folks complaining about it on social media. It's still trespassing. Um, so, you know, what Charlie's talking about is going to housing court to evict somebody. You know, you don't evict somebody who's never been your tenant. Once they claim they have residency, the police will not arrest them. But that's a police issue. I don't think we could they investigate it. The state. Well, OK, so so I'm going to come to your house. I'm going to claim I, I, I reside in your house. If you can prove you live there. You have a good case. But the thing is about proving that you live there. Right. You have to have credible evidence. I assume the homeowner you're talking about has credible evidence that they own the place. They own it. They do but, own it. But, but the, the other person, person saying that living there has tenancy. There's no lease. No. So what I commenced? The month oral. Uh, but it has to be commenced. What was the act to commence the tenancy? They moved in. That's not. Doesn't commence tenancy. That's what. That's what these cases. They're, and they're, they're not in Connecticut, but these, that's what these cases. I, I think it was a big article in the Wall Street Journal. That's where I think I read it. I don't think it was in the current. I think, I think it was the Wall Street Journal. Correct about the law. Yeah. But unfortunately, in reality, yeah. the average citizen doesn't have access to the law. Yeah, because I mean, the chief had mentioned that they're limited to what they can do because it's been considered a civil issue because if the person can show, like Charlie said, I, I'm, I stay here. I have a right to be here. My mail gets delivered here. People so lie, it's six people lie to, to the get police. Them out. People lie to the police all the time and still get arrested. OK, it's not as easy as just saying I get mail here. Right. If a police officer is satisfied that somebody has a right. I, I mean, you know, there's there, there's exposure for the police department too. Okay, if you say somebody's in my house who shouldn't be here, and they come out and they say, "Look, I get the Hartford Current delivered here," and the police officer says, "Okay, nothing I could do." If something happens, property damage or or bodily injury, or worse. The police department has exposure for negligence. So, you know, it's 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 not as complicated as we're making it sound. The, there, there's no new law that lets anybody be a squatter. There's there's no change. There's no case. There's no statute. There's no regulation that's come out in the last 35 years that's any different than it's always been. There's no Supreme Court case that has said, okay. Pay attention because now people can come and stay in your house without a lease mm. and without paying rent. Yeah. There's no there's no change in the law is what I'm trying to convey. So whatever journalism. Well, we know what they you know, they don't always have no, all the facts. It, we know it, that. The title theft issue is a real it's issue. Different. That's yeah. different. That's a that's real different. that's a real issue. That's a different issue. I, and again, it's look, I've I've been a victim of identity theft three or four times. 
Okay. I've had accounts opened in my name. I've gotten statements sent to my house. I've called, I've put fraud alerts on my on, on the credit agencies. I've had to explain to somebody in Texas that no, well, this is your driver's license number. This is your, they had all my information, but I, but I said, look, I don't know, a bank account in Texas. Is there any money in there? No, somebody applied so that then they could apply for credit and they could put down the bank account number. And I said, well, you know, I got a credit block on my account, so nobody's supposed to be up. So there's things that you need to do is what I'm saying to be diligent and protect yourself. But how many, how many times collectively have the five of us in the last, say, two years received a notice from a bank, a healthcare provider, uh, whoever, an insurance company about a data breach, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And they tell you yeah. as part of a class action settlement or as part of a regulatory governmental proceeding, you are entitled to 18 months of free credit monitoring. How many people actually sign up for that? I saw a number in the Wall Street Journal that was below 20%. So, you know, if, if, if folks are concerned about these kinds of things, then they need to be diligent. You know, if you're go if you're going to be away for long periods of time, you put up an Arlo in your house so that you know if somebody's in your home. I mean, part of this is common sense. I think a lot of states are different. That's probably where that, the gist of the article was a different state. So I don't it was all here, but I hope we adjourn our ordinance. Yes, we should. We should. We we went we went over a topic, but but it's 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 good. It's a good discussion. Very good. Yeah. No. Uh but whatever. Uh, so motion to adjourn. Second. Oh, all right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Overruled. Overruled, Peter. That's it. Just make sure you're in the right house, Peter. Uh, <laughs> yeah, where are you staying now? In a TP out in Arizona? What are you doing? Yeah. Oh. I'm at, look, I, I just tried the, the, the video and it works now. Oh, good. Oh, good. But we're Excellent. in the valley of the sun out here. 